we please father me i like us to sing that hymn again using another tune for it now the choir please uh, forgive me can you give us another tune ta 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 Almighty and ever loving Father, once again we give thanks and praise, Lord, for granting us access to your mercy seat. Father, we thank you that your loving kindness that sought for us when we were lost. Thank you for bringing us back home. Thank you for bringing us to that unity with you again. 
Lord, thank you for showing us the way of light. To you be all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Ancient of days, Lord, we open our hearts once again to receive from you. Father, speak to us and grant us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray for grace to practice your word more than ever before. Lord, bless us with that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to the throne of grace. We are mercy is available unto all. That hymn says, from every stormy wind that blows, from every swelling tide of woes, we have them all around us. We have the stormy wind that blows. Economically, it has been blowing. Abby? Socially, morally, health-wise, it has been blowing. But to God be all the glory. Because he has decided to keep us alive. And to bless us with good health. And I pray that mercy will continue to flow unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we enjoy his mercy, the grace to respond to God. By loving him in return, by loving our neighbors, the Lord will grant us that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And that takes us to the theme for today's message, which is the perfect gift of love. The perfect gift of love. And the text is taken from the epistle for this service, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And I want us to read it together. Just read in your own uh, translation. I will read from New King James here. But I want everybody to read because it's talking to us. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1, 2, 3, go. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Hallelujah. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The Bible does not leave us in the doubt to begin to debate which one is the greatest. He says, yes, it's good to have all this. But the one that stands out, the perfect one, is love. In chapter 12 of this same epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, Apostle Paul took time to teach that church, the Corinthian church, to show them with evidence that the way they manifest the gift of God, that they were doing it in error. The other manifestation lacked love, which is the major thing. It was a church so blessed, diverse gift of the Spirit, but as they ministered in different ways, manifesting different kinds of the gift of God, there was lack of the major one, which is love. And if you read that chapter 12, you will discover how Paul taught them. And in chapter 13, Apostle Paul defines the love that he was talking about in order to differentiate it from the lost that was commonly known by them. It divines true love, and I want us to see 
the definition again together as we read from that epistle of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4. The media, if you can give us Amplify, I will first read from New KJV. We like to have Amplify to stay, give us further uh, illustration. It says, Lover, love suffers long and is kind. Love suffers long and is kind. As we read, I want you to begin to look inward and examine your own love. Your definition might be different from this one. But whatever your definition, if it doesn't agree with this, you drop it today. That means there is fault in it. Because this is the scripture. This is the final authority. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Eh? There is no envy in love. Okay? Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Praise the Lord. Now let's read the Amplified. Say, Love endures long and is what? And is patient and kind. Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself utterly. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude. So young ones, if you are rude, your love is faulty. It's not rude. It doesn't matter the position. It doesn't matter the office you are holding. Love is not rude. That is unmannerly. And does not act unbecomingly. Love, that is God's love in us, does not insist on its own right or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. Amen. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Ah. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Hallelujah. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Praise the Lord. You know, anytime I read that verse 7, that verse 7 where it is written that love bears all things. Bears all things. Eh? Can you bear all things? Even with your immediate partner, your spouse, can you bear all things? Or have you been bearing all things? I know I've not been doing it. Honestly. When I read it again yesterday, ah, I said, God, this is not possible for me as a person. 
I know I've not been bearing all things. I can't deceive myself. So I have to ask God for help. Because to God, every other thing is useless. Unless it is motivated and it seeks to love others. So I have to pray and say, Father, help me. He bears all things, endures all things. Have you been enduring all things? Do you think it's possible? You need the grace of God. And honestly, I have been working on myself. Because as a person, I was trained to be highly principled from the beginning. So if you want to alter anything, it's difficult for me to, uh, to accept. But when I discovered that, look, this is not always a strength, I began to pray and work on myself. Work on myself. So when there are things to upset me, I really work on myself not to be upset. And I pray, I'm telling you my own. I don't know your own. But I know I've not been bearing all things. No. And I know I cannot do it on my own. So I have to plead with God. Father, help me. I must not fail. Because I have people under me that I'm praying for. I want them to also make it. And whatever they see in me, we do a lot. We go a long way in their lives. Bears all things. Eh? When you are very hungry and your wife is busy doing something that will not bring food. Eh? You do what? Bear all things. Ah. It can be serious. When there is a program and you know the discussion that this woman is doing, supposed to have ended now. Eh? You do what? Bear all things. If you want to correct, you get back home. To bear it in that public, you need the grace of God. I have misbehaved in the public that I know. Nobody has to tell me. I can face it. I have it. Yes. At times we know. Ah, but they could react even you. We know. They are all things. People of God, let's go back to the scripture. I'm telling you my experience when I went back to the scripture. Be all things, endure all things. And I began to, all these, all things. Ah. But we see. It's not easy. When as a man, you desire the attention of your wife, and he does not show in any sign of understanding. You do what? Be all things. Yeah. It's a serious issue. You be all things and pray for grace to be out. And then discuss it. Don't scatter the floor because of that. Discuss it. So people of God, that is part of the message for us today. To examine our own kind of love. If it agrees with the scripture. And if it doesn't, please don't just say, well, I've done my best. No. Until your best is God's best, you have not done anything. No. So you pray more, and God will grant you the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. He believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Say, love never fails. Never fails. The church these days, we are blessed by wonderful ministers of God. At least I know Nigeria. Wonderful ministers of God, wonderful messages. But if we want to be sincere with ourselves, we must have discovered that most of our messages lack application. And that's why we are not seeing the effect the life of the people around us. Yes, you preach very wonderful message. Wonderful program. But what about the application? 
And what is the application? That is what the parable of the good Samaritan is telling us this morning. That is the application. Love is the application of the gospel. Without it, you just be making noise. Without it, you will just be entertaining yourself. Love is the application of the gospel. No wonder the Bible says Christ came with grace and what? Truth. Grace before truth. If he just came with truth, people may not listen to him. Grace, making himself accessible. These days, we make noise about discipleship in the church. Yes, we know that is our goal, that is our commission, to make disciples. But we must realize that disciples are not made on the pulpit like this. No. Discipleship is an intentional thing, and it has to do with relationship. If you don't relate with people, they won't follow you. And that's the example we have in Christ. He wanted to make disciples, and he called them to himself. They were eating together, moving together, sleeping together. They taught, he taught them how to pray because they were together. But we cherish our own private, say privacy. Nearby. We cherish our privacy. And people cannot assess us and you want to make disciples. Zero. It cannot work. That is not the model handed over to the church by the owner of the church. Privacy, very good. But how many people can you affect with that? Low. And you cannot, people will not come to you if you are not loving. And the kind of love we are talking about is the one that has been defined by Apostle Paul in this 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And I pray the grace to practice this so that our life will be of positive impact in our offices, in our homes, in our society. And the Lord will make it possible for us in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, once again, we need to remind ourselves that love of Christ is the message of the church and is the language of the church. Speaking any other language, the world is not ready to listen to us. What kind of message do you want to preach again? But love when you are open, your heart open to receive all. I thank the media department for giving us this uh, picture. I did not tell them that they should do anything. I just came to the church and I met it. I said, yes. For us to love, our heart must be open. And that, thank God that heart is not closed. Praise the Lord. And we have gifts. You cannot love without giving. That's why other scriptures call it charity. You cannot love. If you are not ready to give, you cannot practice love. I mean, look at Christ. He gave all. Hey. Gave how many? He gave all. Give all. And his own case. He illustrated his own love by his blood. By his blood. Thank God this thing is in red. Eh? God bless the media. Eh? Just say God bless them. Praise the Lord. They are doing their own. Everybody is doing their own. Look at the choir this morning. What are you doing? to promote the gospel of Christ. There's nobody that has not been given one thing or the other to do. To do. But if you are not ready to give, you cannot go far. The church, unless the church is ready to go out and give, not only the scripture, but we must back up our messages 
with the act of love. That's the language we want to speak at Alagbagba. We want to show love to those who are lost, to those who have believed that nothing good can ever happen in Nigeria again. We want to tell them that that is not the scripture. That love is still available in the church. That's what we must pray. That, that is what we must stand for. But it goes beyond messages. We have to back it up with our act. We must be ready to give sacrificially. Thank God for those who have been doing it here in Anglican Church of the Messiah. God, we continue to bless you in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Some give their time, some their money. And I pray the Lord whom you honor with your resources will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, let's do more. Labor more. Because you can never give up to what Christ gave you. No. He gave his own life in the end. Thank God the early church, they got the understanding. And that was why they were giving all. Instead of anyone to suffer any lack. No. These resources will go for it. Love. I've given this testimony before how I was attracted to a church in the north as a young, as a copper then. Just because of the act of love of somebody working as usher in the church. I did not know the pastor. I just came first time in the church I thank God for that compensation because I labored before I got to the church. It's not like the Southwest. I had to travel from a local government about 70 kilometers to the city to worship on Sunday. Yes. Because in the entire, that headquarters of the local government, there was no church. They have vowed never to allow church building in the place. And I had to travel down. And somebody said, Okay, you are look, looking for a living church. Go to Sabungeri. Try and locate Soso Church. And thank God I located the church. And as I said, enter, that lady took notice of me that this person is new. And she came to me, gave everything that I needed to worship. After the service, I went out. I wanted to go my way. And she quickly came. I said, Ah, sir, please, can we meet you? Can we? Where? I'm so, so, so person. Say, where are you going now? I, did, I didn't know where I was going. Because it was not my intention to travel back immediately, but there was no place to go. So I couldn't say I was going home. There was no home. So I had to narrate my story. Where well, I'm a copper here. I, I'm serving at social so local government. I traveled down for the uh, service. So very soon, I'll be going back to my base. Yeah, okay, can you please wait? So I waited. After the whole thing, they now said, can you please follow us home? Yeah, how can I follow you? I was trying to look for the husband because following a woman. Eh? I didn't see the husband. I saw his, I mean, her son. And I secretly asked the son, where is your daddy? Say, ah, my daddy is not here. Say, where is he? He says, he's not in Nigeria. Say, where is he? He says, he's in the U.S. So I look at the woman again. This woman that looks like an ordinary person. So she has her husband in the U.S. And she was ready to relate with me this way. So I stayed. Now say, can we now go? Since I saw a boy, okay, let me follow. So we went home, a bit far from Sabungeri. And when we got home, fine place. I honestly, I underrated the, the lady. The way just put one uh, scarf on the head. I was thinking it was those lady uh, who has waited for long, nobody to. No. She was a federal civil servant where, I mean, comfortable. So I sat 
brought drink. And later I look at outside. It's getting a bit. Will I be able to make it to my place? And before I know it, he came, she came to me and said, Sir, the table is set. Eh? Table is set for copper. And honestly, you know, it, it, it touched me. That's why up to today, it's still fresh. In my life, nobody has ever set a table for me like that in my life. That was the first time. Did everything, covered it. That was the one to unveil. See, and you know copper now, just mix everything with the oil and go your way. But this one, where sir? Ah. Of course, I was hungry now, since money. So I took the food, I disciplined myself, I just... I ate moderately. So, and I said, ah, ma, it's time for me to go. He said, where are you going? I said, ah, I'm going back to my base now. He said, ah, your room is already made. Ah. Human being, you're not an angel. Not an angel. You see, we have turned church to mean, oh, I, I, those who worship in the north, they will tell you that you are just playing here. We enjoy Christianity over there. You see, true love. This lady did not know me anywhere. That was the first time. That was the first time. It, she took the risk to take me home. She treated me like a, like a king. And before I know it, she said, your room is, ah, see, your room is prepared. I was reluctant to go to the room. Because I, didn't, I, I did not think of such. So eventually, I took time to go and check the room. When I saw the room, the bed itself was welcoming. And I said, Copper, you will enjoy the life of your head here tonight. <laughs> if you just once, this one. And honestly, I enjoyed myself. Slept well. Copper. You know, people like us, our route to copper was not like most of our children today. Because as terrible as the situation of a, of a copper was, it was a relief for us to flee from home. At least go flee by, I can go anywhere. Because there was no better home to return. To. We talked about it in the morning. Home, polygamous home. The survivor of the fittest. What is it there to enjoy? So that night, I enjoyed myself. And up to today, we remain family. Act of love. He did not preach any message to me. And throughout my stay in the, is anywhere she said we go, I go. I just follow. Because the time, another time I came back and she said, we are not going to that church again. Say so when my husband came, he said we should go to another, and that was how we now joined uh, the day. I did not ask questions. I did not ask, I just followed. Because I've been shown love. Real one. Real one. And that is why up to today, it doesn't take me anything to open my home to anyone. Because I benefited from such. That is what we are talking about. How will I not follow her? It was later I discovered that the lady is from Ibadan here. We began to talk and eventually she told me that the family is from Ibadan. Their house is just by the fence of St. Anne's Church. And when we came back here, he just surrendered. She surrendered our mother to us, myself and my wife. So we became a children. And be taking care of her. She's now reunited with uh, her husband in the U.S. People of God, love is still available. Some people are still practicing it. Some people are practicing it. I remember in that redeemed church, there was a time the pastor had to announce who is Sister Blessing. Because when you see the first time I, uh, Paul, who invited you, Sister Blessing? We invited you, Sister Blessing. The pastor did not know her. Say, who is Sister Blessing? 
She didn't know what happened. So the pastor said, I just wanted to know you. How many of us can attract others by what we do, not by what we preach? That is what the world is waiting for now. The world is waiting for us to manifest in the areas of love, just as we have seen in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It is still practicable. It's practicable. I don't know how many children that lady now has. There was a time there was a whole church in her place. My wife, we belong to the same thing. I met her there. She was already one of the family before I came. Many of us like that. Many of us like that. Our homes, are they open to people? Let's think about it. Let's think about it. And if you have discovered any area that you need to amend, please talk to God. The woman affected me a lot. All those times I was born again, but I saw love in practical form, which is what the scripture today is asking us to do. If we want our messages to have impact. I'd like to refer us to one of our hymns before we pray. SSNS 621. SSNS 621. Since I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou mightest ransom be and quickened from the dead. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I spent long years for thee in weariness and woe that an eternity of joy thou mightest know. I spent long years for thee as thou spent one for me. My father's home of light, my rainbow circled throne, I left for earthly night. For wandering sad and lone, I left it all for thee, as thou left out for me. I suffered much for thee, more than tongue can tell of bitterest agony. To rescue thee from hell. I suffered much for thee. What canst thou bear for me? What are you bearing for God? What are you bearing for God? Common forgiveness. You cannot bear. Eh? That means we have not started. Because today we are being reminded that every gift, whether spiritual or natural, Minus love is what? Is zero. Is zero. And that love is not in the word of mouth. It is sacrificial. It will take something from you. What are we bearing for God? Say, and I have brought to thee down from my home above. Salvation full and free. My pardon and my love. Great gift I brought to thee. What has thou brought to me? What, what are we giving to God? May God open our eyes to discover this true love. How much he loved us and how he wants us to respond to his love. How much he loved us. He said our tongue cannot tell, we can't describe it. We can't describe it. It says, Oh, let thy life be given, the years for him be spent. What fetters all be riven, and joy with suffering blent. Bring thou thy worthless all, Jesus Christ. Thy what? You know, to us, all those things are so important. Landed property, Good. They are very important. You can even kill a child. Who goes near it? Eh? You touch the car, 
the car that I've watched this morning. Eh? I might have said it here before. We used to have one uh, father in the extended family who would hardly carry you in his car. Then it was period 504. When 504 was uh, a guy of the car. The car will always be very neat. So it doesn't, if you, you will just pass you by and we will wave. And one day he said, I will, the, the thing is, he will not carry you so that you will not uh, dirty the car. How can I carry this one? Yeah? And they will come and they will bring all this faith into my car. No. We just roll up and be going. And God is awesome. Before he died, he was begging us to give him the list of our car as children. That means there was nothing again. Yes, it's not a story that I read you. It's in our own family. He died a poor person. And when, they, when it was raining, we were young then. They would bring money in sack to deliver the truck drivers. We were there. We, they would lock the door and be sorting out. When they travel, they must have traveled far, maybe twice a month, they will not come and deliver. There was money. But then he locked people out. Are you locking people out now? You will need them in the future. I pray they will not lock you out. It was so worse for that man that when he died, the children were so disunited that they could not buy the casket. They did not agree. It wasn't that if they decided they wouldn't be able, they had the money. But the meeting, they could not just agree. It was her dad who said, eh, eh, we, we have to rescue this situation. I'm going to yield the duty while I do go. And they began to send for other people in the family. And they contributed and, you know, boy your last year, just bury him anyhow. Worthless. That is what we are being reminded. All those things that mean so much to us, to God, they are worthless, people of God. He said, bring what? Down thy worthless all. You better bring them when they are still useful. So that you gain eternity in the end. He said, follow thy Savior's call. Let's bow our head as we pray. Rima skanda ya kalabu shanta ya kalaba shanta ya raba baba skanda ya kalabu skinte ye kile push shanta ya rima like push kinde ye kile push shanta ya oh father we thank you i want you to talk to god and say father let your word prosper in my heart today let your word prosper in my life today in the mighty name of jesus malike push shunto ye kima skanda ya kalaba shanta ya Father, let your word prosper in my life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word prosper in my home. I want you to talk to God. Just talk to him. Beloved, I can testify the word of God is already prospering in my life. And I've shown you, I've told you my own testimony. I was reading and the word was speaking to me. And I have to pray and say, Father, help me out. I know I've not been bearing all. I've not been enduring all. Oh, Lord, help me. I want you to talk to God. Help is available unto you today. Help is available unto you today. Oh, Lord, help us. We don't want to die a failure. Lord, we don't want to die a failure. We don't want to die as unprofitable servant of yours. Lord, help us out in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The grace to surrender our worthless all. Lord, grant us that grace. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. People of God, this, as I said, you cannot do it by your senses. Unless you surrender to Christ and ask him to help you out. You cannot do it. It's beyond human reasoning. At times, it doesn't make sense. Because it's a spiritual matter. Love is a spiritual matter. That's why many people still don't understand it. And they cannot practice it. Can you tell God and say, Father, I surrender all unto you today. I surrender my weaknesses. I need your strength, almighty God. As a worker in the church, your reaction to others. We go a long way either to enhance the gospel or to hinder the gospel. I shared my own testimony how that woman enhanced the gospel in my life up to today. I want you to pray so that you will not be marking time and you will not be an hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Pray for help. Yes, you have been doing it. Thanks be to God. Pray that God will help you to do more. Don't give up. It is very demanding. Love is demanding because it's sacrificial. Pray for the grace to continue. Our Father and our God, we are very grateful unto you. Thank you for that which you have deposited again in our land. Father, we confess that on our own we cannot do it. But Lord, we rely on you for help. Help us out, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, wherever we have been failing, ancient of this we pray today. Lord, grant us the grace to be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. We want our life, O oh God, to attract all others unto the fold of Christ. Father, let this come to pass in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed.